Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you and today we are talking about a really cool thing that's really kind of hard to do, but you can do it. And that is, you see this little guy right here. He's really impressive. Because this end, if you look at it, is a SAS connection, not a SATA connection. But on the back end you have a SATA bridge connection for a SAS SATA controller and a power output. Now let me explain why. Okay, so here we have a typical classic SATA drive. And if you notice, with a SATA connection, there's a little L right here and a little L here. And that would classify the drive as basically a Seagate SATA drive. But with the world of SAS, if you look at it, there is no L bracket. That's a problem because, let's say for theory, you have a bad drive or a diagnostic error that happened on a drive or you just want to work with a single hard drive. Well, to do that, you most likely had it in a storage array like this and that's a lot of overhead. And more importantly, it wouldn't really work because it's running on an HBA uh, which actually you could do a little work with the HBA or a RAID controller, which would not. And the reason why it doesn't want to do that is because RAID controllers, when they boot up a hard drive like a SAS drive in a RAID group, it runs a series of diagnostics automatically to see if it meets the tested requirement. If it comes back and says, nope, I'm not quite as fast as I need to be, it immediately tags the drive as failing or failed. What do you do then? Well, you got to take the drive out and replace it first let it respawn the RAID group, then you take the drive itself and what do you do with it? You have to test it and you need to test it cheaply. So this little $10 item here is, will allow you to do that. And let me show you how. First, you have to have a, an area where you can connect up a SATA connection like you see here, which is going down to this SSD drive, small SSD drive for booting purposes. Then, of course, you need an operating system. And um, by doing that, all you would need next is a power cable. And then you need the drive and the adapter kit. Now, let me show you what it looks like in the final process. Hang on just a second. Okay, so here you see the adapter edge, which is right here. And you want to be careful with this adapter edge. You don't want to damage it. So you hook up the power output and you run your SATA cable into the motherboard. And at that point in stage, you can initiate a boot up of the system and look at the screen display in regards to detection. Now, with detection comes the nature of how the operating system is going to treat the SAS drive. So to do that, you want to boot in and see if it's first detected. And then after that, it's very easy because at that point in stage, you can turn around and um, work with your preferred version of diagnostic drives and investigate what you've got. So with this, I'm going into the settings so I can see what do I have out there. Am I seeing my drives? I have a hard drive. I've got a USB drive. I have another ADA drive. And so on and so on. So I've got two hard drives. So that's what I want to see. And at that point in stage, these two hard drives, this being our target, um, will allow us to confirm that we have a functional drive and that we can now just boot into our operating system. And that's what's happening here. Now, while the operating system is booting up now, here you see the drive. Now, you want to put your hand on the edges, not on the logic board, but on the edges, to see if you feel a rotation. A rotation means that the SATA and the power outputs are working correctly, and you get at just a tiny low-res vibration, which I do. So, at that point in stage, I'm coming over here now to do a login. Okay, so now what we're doing in recognition is that we are attempting to look at a bad hard drive to see if the drive will come up. 
and as it's showing here in disk management, because you've got a lot of functional tools in the operating system of both Windows 10, Linux, Unix, and of course server, Microsoft server variances, that you can do most of your diagnostic work. But this hard drive that died on me is a dead hard drive for sure, because it does spin, it is active, but thanks to this little adaptive cable kit, awesome, because you're able to do diagnostics. Now you can get three or four or five of these, and then just hook up your gear and start testing them out. And that's that's something that's of value. I uh, don't want to miss out on that capacity. So with that being said, this is the end of the video. I hope it helped out a little bit. I'll include the link for the component. It's a great component to have. I was working with a friend of mine, Anthony, and he really wanted to be able to start flashing hard drives uh, and or formatting sector 520s to 512s. And this is a quick, down and dirty way of doing it. Now, one last tiny detail, and I always do this at the end of my videos. Make sure that your interface, your SATA controller, is a SAS SATA controller. Very important detail. Doesn't work on a bare bones SATA controller. So, just as a heads up, you want to use a SAS SATA. A lot of the motherboards do have that built in feature. But we all use diagnostic boards that could be a little older. So all you do is you just get yourself an adaptive card that can provide you a SAS, basic SAS services, and you can just connect one drive up and you're good to go. Um, and that pretty much is it for my side of things. Um, I will let you go. I hope you guys enjoy it and you take care.